hello guys so today i'm going to be sharing with you how to sew this eight pieces bustier blouse you see here it is simple detailed and beginner friendly in the previous tutorial i shared how to draft this blouse you see here so this video is a continuation of that video if you are yet to watch that tutorial i'll be dropping the link for you in the description box for you to go ahead to check it out so now we are going to dive into the business of the day which is how to sew the eight pieces bustier blouse so the first thing I went ahead to do is to cut out my lining piece which I have here and here I have two pieces of the center panel and two pieces for the side. While cutting I went ahead to mark a sewing allowance of 0.5 inch all the way around and for the side I added my allowance at this point and also on the hem but there is none on the side because I added that of the side while I was drafting already. And here I have for the back block of the 8 pieces bustier blouse I'm making. So for the back piece there is no allowance on the zipper area but I have on this part you see me touching and also for the side there is none on the side but I added on all this area you see me touching. So this is for the back. The next I'm going to go ahead to quickly do now is to part the lining piece of the blouse I'm going to be making with my medium size wording after which I'll come back to show you what to do next. I'm going to be telling you the reason why you should part your lining piece instead of your main fabric as the tutorial goes on. So after attaching the wording to the lining piece, this is what it is going to look like. Before you go ahead to attach your wording to it, the first thing to do is to join the center panel together. Then you go ahead to cut the center wording as one piece, after which you go ahead to cut out the side piece also. And after joining the center to the side panel, what I went ahead to do was to cover the seam with my gum canvas. Then I went ahead to attach a gum stick to the lower part because I had no crinoline. But if you have a crinoline, you can simply go ahead to skip this process, but I had none and I I want the blouse to stand out very well that was why i went ahead to attach my gum stay to the lining piece also and here i have the back block of the blouse i've also gone ahead to join the center to the side and this is what it looks like after doing that i also went ahead to attach my gum stay from the waist down to the hem also so next i'm going to go ahead to alter my pattern as you can see here because i'll be attaching the plain fabric on the hem of the blouse while the upper part is going to be my ankara before i go ahead to cut it out i'll go ahead to label the center part as cf and i'll also go ahead to label the band area also as cf and for the side i'll go ahead to measure it as sf which is side front and i'll repeat the same thing for the band also and also i'll go ahead to repeat the same thing for the back So after labeling it, the next thing I'm going to go ahead to do now is to separate the band from the upper bodies like you see me doing in the video. So after cutting it out, the next thing I'm going to go ahead to do now is to cut out my fabric and I'll be cutting my Ankara piece on the upper part while this part here is going to be my plain black fabric. And when cutting, I'll be adding a sewing allowance of 0.5 inch all the way around. So here I have my pattern laid on my fabric. Here I have both the center back and the center front. And what I went ahead to do was to mark a sewing allowance of 0.5 inch on this part you see me touching. But for the center back, there is no allowance on the center back. While for the center front, I went ahead to mark a sewing allowance of 0.5 inch all the way around. And when cutting, you'll be cutting out two pieces. And here I have the side block of the blouse. I also went ahead to mark a sewing allowance of 0.5 inch on all the parts you see me touching like this but there is no allowance on the side of the side block of both the front and the back because I already added that of the side while I was drafting. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead to quickly do now is to cut it out.
So after cutting out my fabric, this is what it looks like once I was done cutting. And I've also gone ahead to cut out the band and this is what the band looks like. And when cutting the band, I went ahead to mark a sewing allowance of 0.5 inch all the way around the band as you can see. And also you'll be cutting two pieces of the band for each panel, you'll be cutting two pieces. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead to do now is to join the band to my main fabric. So I'm going to go back to my sewing machine and join the band to each of the panel using 0.5 inch sewing allowance I added while cutting it out. After doing that, I'm going to go ahead to attach my gum stay to it, after which I'll come back to show you the next step. So after I was done joining the band to my main fabric, this is what it looks like. This is what it should have and I also went ahead to attach my gum stay to it and this is what I have. The next thing I'm going to go ahead to do now is to start joining the piece together. So here I have the front block of the blouse I'm making. First, I'll go ahead to join the center of the blouse together like this. I'm going to go ahead to stitch that down to the hem. After doing that, I'll go ahead to join the sides, making sure the good face are facing each other. Then I'll attach the side to the center panel like this also. So here I have the back block of the blouse I'm making. For the back block, I'll not be joining the center back together because the zipper is going to be on the center. What I'll go ahead to do for the back block is to attach the sides to the back block. So I'm going to go back to my sewing machine to attach the side to the center back like this and I'll be repeating the same thing for the other side. Once I'm done doing that, I'll come back to show you what to do next. So after I was done joining the center to the side panel, this is what the blouse is going to look like. As you can see, this is what the bust here looked like. The bust here came out really nice. So this is what the front block is going to look like once you are done joining the center panel to the side. And I also went ahead to repeat the same thing for the back. And this is what the back panel is going to look like. After joining them together, you are going to go ahead to open up the seam and give it a good press so that it lays flat completely. So this is what the back is going to look like. I'm going to be fixing my zipper to the center back so the next thing i'm going to go ahead to quickly do now is to attach my strip to each of the seam i have on the blouse and in doing that i've gone ahead to cut out these long strips you see here i went ahead to attach my gum canvas to it because i'm using a velvet fabric and it's very light so i had to attach an st to it and the width of the piece of fabric i have here is two inch so i'm going to go ahead to fold it into two then I'll go ahead to stitch it on the seam from the upper part down to the hem. So I'll go over to my sewing machine to show you how to do this. So like I said earlier, we're going to be attaching the strip on each of the seam we have on the blouse. I'm going to be illustrating with this side of the blouse. So I'll start from this upper part down to the hem. So the first thing you're going to go ahead to do is to fold your strip into two like you see me doing in the video. After folding it into two, the next thing you're going to go ahead to do is to place it, making sure it's very close to the seam you have at that point. You're going to go ahead to place it on it like this. Then you go ahead to start stitching. When stitching it, you're going to be stitching using less than 0.25 inch. So I'm going to go ahead to stitch following the curve I have on the bustier area. So you have to be careful while doing this so you don't lose the curve on the bustier area. That is why I added my wording to the lining piece and not to the main fabric because if you should attach the wording to your main fabric you're going to find it difficult stitching the strip to the blouse like you see me doing in the video so to make it easier it is important that you place your wording on the lining piece so that it will be easy for you to stitch your strip on your main fabric so you're going to go ahead to stitch it all the way down following the seam you have on that part of your blouse so once you're done stitching that part this is what you're going to be having the next thing to do is to turn it over like this then you go ahead to stitch on the other side and when stitching this part make sure you stitch very close to the edge of the strip like you see me doing in the video So after stitching, this is what it is going to look like once you are done stitching it to your main fabric. So I'll go ahead to repeat the same process on the other seams I have on the blouse. So I'm stitching it on all the parts where I join the panel together. 
So this is what I had once I was done stitching it together. I also went ahead to give it a good press and this is what it looks like once I was done stitching it. And here I have the back block of the blouse. I also went ahead to repeat the same thing on the back block and this is what the back block of the blouse looked like once I was done stitching my strip to it. So the next I'm going to go ahead to quickly do now is to work on the yoke of the blouse I'm making and here I've gone ahead to cut out the yoke and here I have the yoke for both the front and the back. While cutting I added my personal allowance to this part and also to the shoulder for the front. While for the back I went ahead to add my allowance to the center back, to the shoulder and also to this part of the yoke. The next I'm going to go ahead to quickly do now is to finish up the neckline of the yoke. So I'm going to go ahead to open it up like you see me doing in the video. So for me I'm using the same lace fabric as the lining piece but you can use a bias to finish up the neckline of your blouse so i'll go back to my sewing machine to finish up the neckline and if you're making a armless blouse you also need to close up the armhole area but for me i'm going to be attaching the sleeves to mine so i'll not be finishing up the armhole area so i'm going to go back to my sewing machine to quickly stitch it after which i'll come back to show you what to do next so after stitching the neckline of the yoke, this is what I had once I was done stitching it. For the back, I went ahead to close up the center back and also the neckline. While for the front, I only went ahead to finish up the neckline. So the armhole area is still open because I'm attaching a sleeve to my armhole. But if you are not attaching a sleeve to yours, you will need to close up the armhole. And this is what the yoke is going to look like. The next I'm going to go ahead to quickly do now is to attach the yoke to the main bodies. So here I have my main bodies. Before you go ahead to attach the yoke to your main bodies, what you go ahead to do first is to check if they align like this. If they align properly, then you go ahead to start attaching it. So the next thing you're going to go ahead to do is to place the yoke on your dress like this, making sure that the good face of the yoke is facing the good face of the main bodies. Then you go ahead to place the lining piece on it, making sure the good face of the lining piece is also facing your fabric. After doing that, the next thing you're going to go ahead to do is to stitch the three piece together. You're going to go ahead to stitch from this part down to the other side. So if you are not attaching a sleeve to yours, you also be closing up the armhole area of the blouse. You stitch from this part down to the other armhole area like so. Once you're done doing that, the next thing you're going to go ahead to do is to finish up the hemline. So if you have a crinoline, you're going to be attaching your crinoline at this point. Then after stitching the hemline, I'll go ahead to close up the sides, after which I'll turn it over and give it a good press. And also for the back piece, I'm going to be repeating the same process for the back piece. So I'm going to be attaching the yoke to the back piece also. For the yoke, the first thing you're going to go ahead to do is to mark your zipper allowance because the yoke will not be starting from the beginning of your blouse. You're going to go ahead to mark out your zipper allowance. Mine is at this point. Then you're going to go ahead to place the yoke on it like this, making sure that the good face of the yoke is facing the blouse. After placing it like this, the next thing you're going to go ahead to do is to place your lining piece on it, making sure the good face of your lining piece is facing your fabric also. Then you stitch the neckline Go ahead to finish up the hem the zipper allowance and also the side and if you are not attaching a sleeve to yours you're also going to go ahead to close up the ample area but you'll be leaving a little space with which you'll be turning it over to the good face and also if you are fixing the crinoline to yours you'll be attaching the crinoline at this point so before attaching my lining piece to my main fabric what i went ahead to do was to reduce the lining by 0.5 inch because i don't want my lining and my main fabric to be equal length so what i went ahead to do was to fold the front block together and i went ahead to trim out 0.5 inch from the hem and i also went ahead to repeat the same thing for the back this is because i don't want the lining piece to show on the hem of the blouse i'm making so after attaching the yoke and the lining piece to the blouse this is what i had this is what the yoke is going to look like as you can see it came out really nice and it's looking very neat and this is what the hem of the blouse is going to look like so to make this part relax when stitching the lining piece to your main fabric make sure you attach your hemming gum to it so that when ironing it together it is going to relax perfectly and you also be doing the same thing on the yoke area also and here I have the back block. This is what I have once I was done stitching the back block together. And here is my zipper allowance while the yoke starts from this point. And this is what the inner parts of the blouse look like once I was done stitching the piece together. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead to quickly do now is to join the front and the back blouse together. Before you go ahead to 
join it together and make sure you check to see if the side of both the front and the back align so for me mine align if yours is not aligning you need to go back and work on it before you join the front and the back together so next i'm going to go over to my sewing machine to join the shoulders together after which i'll also go ahead to close up the sides of the blouse so once I'm done closing up this part, I'm going to be repeating the same thing on the other side. Then I'll go ahead to attach my zipper to the center back of the blouse. So once I'm done doing all this, I'll come back to show you the final look of the blouse. So after I was done stitching my blouse together, this is what I have. I'm here to attach the sleeve to it. So this is what I had once I was done stitching it together. So if you find this video helpful to you, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and also drop a comment if you are yet to. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.